Hi everyone, my name is Stella Kim and I'm an engineer on the ecosystem team here at CircleCI. In this video, we'll review how orbs help developers across the globe. I'll also cover how private orbs now allow you to share configuration across your organization's projects privately. To begin, we're going to need to use the CLI. So we want to first install it. Here are some options for you according to the environment. There is also an alternative with curl if you'd like and a manual download. Now, once you've done that, you can test it out with Circle CI. You'll see the available commands. To start, let's set up. It'll prompt me for the API token, which you can find on this page, app.circleci.com settings user tokens. For the purposes of this demo, I won't show you my token, but you can go ahead and hit the add API token, copy and paste the output, and get back to the prompt. So once you paste in your token and you default to the circleci.com host, since you're a cloud user, there will be a confirmation message with your username. So now that we're set up, we're going to go over the manual authoring process again. This is the authoring process. It, you will want to give it a very descriptive name and you'll note that the orb slug is made up of a namespace and an orb name separated by a forward slash. So often the namespace corresponds to your company name. So Every step of the way, I'll show you what output there is from the prompt whenever you try to run a command. This one is for the namespace. You'll see that create is the available one. So I will try that out now. The usage with the parameters are name, VCS type, org name. So I will give it the same name as my org name as the namespace name and try it out. As you can see, it tells me that this is something I can't change later. So you can just type a Y to confirm that you understand this. Of course, I had my namespace already set up. It just tells me that there's already one existing. So there's a one-to-one -one relationship with the namespace and the org. Can't create multiple ones. All right, so now that I've done that and I have a namespace for which my orbs will be associated, I will go ahead and create a one. Circle CI orb create is the command. So I'll show you what that looks like. You can pass in the namespace forward slash org name. Now, what this essentially does, I don't even have to have the YAML file ready. It just parks my spot <laughs> for this orb, so to speak, on the Circle CI. I am giving it as descriptive an orb name as possible under my own namespace. Now, because it's a private orb, um, you'll note that under the flags, there's an optional one you can provide. So I've done that. And it prompts me to confirm. And there it is. This is the message you will see when it is successful. It is not going to be listed on the registry, uh, usable only by org users. Perfect. So it's time for me to show you my org and the YAML file that I have. So essentially, I have a job defined here with create deployment as its name. Some of the public orbs are usable in private orbs, of course. So I'm using those and passing in an executor from those orbs and then for my steps, for the sake of this demo, I am only outputting a command echoing a message. But you can see the commented out code where you might be, say, referencing the public orb and running any of the commands there or the jobs here. So I made <laughs> mistakes on purpose. So I'm going to try validating this file now just to show what it's like. As expected, since I made mistakes, I see some error in config file validation errors. Looking at this quickly, it looks like it wanted strings instead of mappings. So I get rid of that and try it again. Let's see. Okay. Yeah, so it is valid now. Now I have some confidence in this orb. I am going to attempt to publish a dev version so that I can try to run this in my builds and see it in action, so to speak before committing to a semantic version. So I can do that with the orb publish command. Um, I will show you what that interface looks like. Publish. I'll show you what that command uh, interface looks like before running it. So it looks like I have to give it the path, the file, the orb name that I reserved for myself. So I just need to go back and double check. All right, that was what I reserved for myself. And I am giving it the dev 
version, and that is the first one. If I do this, I have a confirmation message saying that the dev label can be overwritten by anyone and it'll expire in 90 days, which is something important to consider now. But I have this because I just want to test it out first. And so what I'll do is make a commit. But before I do that, I just want to quickly check whether this was done. So orb list is a command you can use to filter for private orbs in your organization. I have a lot of them, <laughs> but to confirm, this one was not published yet. It's a dev version. Okay, so confirming that it's not really published yet to a semantic version, I can, for the sake of the demo, add maybe a comment and try this out. So I have my GitHub project set up on CircleCI already. And so I can just create a commit, push it to this branch and see the build work. Okay, pushed. All right, so going to my project, I'll filter for all branches. Now you can see that the commit I just pushed triggered it. If I drill down, you'll be able to see that I'm spinning it up. And there's my command, which was just a echo of a message and it works. In reality, you'll have actual commands running, of course. So this is a way for you to test out whether it works or not. Now that I have some confirmation that it's good to go, I will actually publish and promote it to a semantic version. So we're using the same command, but as you can see, there's also commands underneath this, such as increment and promote. So I'm going to use promote to promote a development version of an orb to a semantic release. To do that, I reuse the publish command with promote passed in. As you can see, these are the parameters I can now pass into publish promote. I give it my orb and I will have to specify. I will go back and copy and paste this to be exact and <laughs> not make tech errors. Okay. Uh, and I will spe specify that it's a patch segment. All right. So it was promoted to a semantic release version. Let's confirm things. So if I were to use the private flag on or list command for my namespace, I can see them again. And next to that orb I just published, I will see the tag semantic release version as well. So I have some confidence that it is promoted properly. Now in the config file, I originally had a different orb, a private orb under my org. I will switch it over to this one and specify the right to release. I am also using my coworkers public orb above. So I will try this out. So I'm going to make a new commit and say that I'm using a new private orb and I will push it just to see it works in the build. All right, let's go take a look. All right. So same branch triggered properly. Okay. Public orb works. The new private orb looks like it works as well. All right. So I will now show you what happens when a user outside your organization tries to use the private orb. So to demonstrate this, I'm going to add my coworkers private orb in my config file. And you'll note, of course, that I don't belong to the organization. And so I'll show you what happens here. I'll make a new branch to trigger build and I'll commit this. So let's commit and push and take a look at the build output. You'll notice that there's an error message saying it is not found in the org registry. So uh, because this build is for a project that doesn't belong to that org, it has failed. Now this is confirmation that private orgs truly do 
only work within the confines of your organization. With that, I want to make a quick mention of the dev kit for creating and authoring new orbs. The manual process that I've shown you actually can be automated if you use this developer kit. Now, this kit is pretty extensively documented, so please do reference it to follow the steps. You'll note that it's not recommending orb create, instead it recommends orb init. This is because that command will walk you through interactive prompts to author your first orb. So what I want to do is show you that there is also a flag to make that more private. So let's come from that. As you can see, the private flag is passable. For more details on how to privately share and use configuration at your organization, please refer to private orb documentation or reach out to your customer support team. Thank you for joining me for this demo. We're all really excited to see how you'll use private orbs to streamline your development processes.